But sometimes our children wonder if all that we do in Muharram is just cultural and what significance it plays in Islam. And, th and that is why I wish to talk about the importance of marking Ashura and what it represents in Islam. I mentioned last week that Hussein is important because without his rising, Yazid would have destroyed or changed Islam beyond recognition. There would have been no Kaaba and there would have been no Quran today without the blood of Hussein. This itself proves that Hussein salam was chosen by Allah to preserve the message of Rasulullah and the Quran. And every Muslim believes in the authentic hadith of Thaqalain that I leave behind the Quran wa itrati ahl bayti. I talked about Ziyarat Warith in the first sermon. If you think about it, Allah's message to the human race has always been one, and that is the message of Tawheed. That you know who your creator is, and that you worship no one besides him. Neither physically worship idols, or the fire, nor symbolically and psychologically worship anyone besides Allah, such as other human beings, or wealth, or prestige, or kinship, or power, or pleasure. This message of guidance, of Hidayah, started with Adam salam. Nuh built an ark for 200 years just to save this message. He floated in the raging seas with 72 followers, while the rest of humankind drowned and were destroyed only to preserve Tawheed. Yunus salam was swallowed by a fish to keep this message alive. Ibrahim salam jumped into a fire to save La ilaha illallah. He placed a knife on the throat of his only son so that Tawheed is not lost. Musa salam left Egypt and all things familiar to him on the spur of a moment and then went back and faced Fir'aun and fought against all odds and crossed a parting sea just to save Tawheed. Isa alayhi salam risked his life and was almost crucified until Allah raised him for this reason as well. Isa alayhi salam brought the dead back to life and healed the lepers and the blind just to prove that there is no God but Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. split the moon and walked on thorns and tolerated people stoning him, returning every night home, bleeding from head to toe. People called him a magician, a madman, a sorcerer, a poet. All this, why? Because he would not step, stop saying, Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. Say la ilaha illallah so that you may be saved. Whether Amir al-Mu'mineen kept quiet over his rights or whether he fought in Jamal and Safin and Nahrwan, it was only to save Islam. Fatima salam gave up her right to Fadak and even when her baby was miscarried through violence, she kept quiet so that the Adhan would still call out La ilaha illallah. Hassan salam signed a peace treaty, let go of his right, drank poison and threw up pieces of his liver so that you and I can prostrate before Allah and say Subhan Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdih and know who our creator is. Now, when Hussein came to Karbala, he brought all this with him on his shoulders. That is why he is the warith of Adam and the warith of Nu and the warith of Musa and the warith of Ibrahim and the warith of Isa and the warith of Al-Mustafa and all those before him because he carried this Hidayah on his shoulders. If Hussein was to fail in Karbala, then all guidance ever sent to human beings would fail. Yazid represented the darkest period in Muslim history. Keep in mind that even the madhahib that you have amongst the Sunni Muslims today, the Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanafi, Humbly. This came about, the formation of these came about during the time of Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq later on. In other words, 
at the time of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the aqidah and the fiqh and the knowledge of Muslims had not yet been established so solidly. At that point it was Hussein and it was Yazid. And if Hussein was to fail, then all guidance to human race would fail. And that is why on the day of Ashura we must not forget Zainab alayhi salam as well. Because the sacrifice of Hussein and his victory over Yazid and the revival of Islam would not have emerged from the sands of Karbala if it was not for her. You see, when Imam Hussein alayhi salam fell from his horse on the day of Ashura, then Hidayah itself fell from the horse. Islam fell. The Quran fell. No, I should say the Kaaba itself fell on the hot sands of Karbala. Adam fell. Nuh and Ibrahim fell. Musa and Isa and Muhammad fell. Ali and Fatima fell. Hassan fell. They all fell when Hussein fell. Because he carried this. He was the warith of all of this. So all of it now rested with him. And this is put very beautifully by a poet in Urdu. He says that when Hussein fell, he says, Shabbar gire, butul giri, Mustafa gire. Sadma hua ye dil pe ke sab ambiya gire. Chothe falak se hazrate, Isa bi gir pare. Behosh ho ke tur pe Musa bi gir pare. So he makes a very fine point that without Hussein, nothing would have remained. So when he fell, all the Anbiya fell. But the poet then brings out a more subtle point, of course, that there is a difference between Hussein and the others. Yes, it is true that when Hussein fell, Chote falak se hazrate Isa bigir pare, behosh ho ke tur pe Musa bigir pare. But then he says, Tarpa idar to khak pe zahra kaladla. So the satanic forces of evil and darknesses, once Hussein fell, this shaitan himself saw an opportunity to wipe out guidance from the human race. And the satanic forces of evil and darkness approached this thirsty, dying Islam. And with a blunt dagger, it slaughtered and cut the throat of this thirsty Islam. Everything came shattering down. For a moment, it was all over. Yazid had won. He could now do as he pleases and explain what happened in Karbala as he wished. All the efforts of Adam to Khatam were gone. And as he bled, because Hussein was an Imam and therefore he was the Hujjah of Allah, the proof of Allah on the heavens and the earth, and the Imam over ins and malaika and jinn. And because Allah sends his blessings to the world through his representative, and he was the axis through which the whole fabric of the universe connected, as he bled, this fabric was threatened, it began to weaken as if it was about to tear apart and to be rent asunder. And that is why both the Shia and the Sunni sources have said that not only did human beings cry for Hussein, but the jinn cried for him. And they have said, for a moment the sun was eclipsed on the day of Ashura, and the stars came out, and people thought the day of judgment had come to pass. A shockwave rippled through Karbala. The land began to quake. The heavens rained blood, every stone began bleeding, and every tree and every leaf turned red. The waters of Furat began rising, fi maujin kal jibal, they rose like waves calling out, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, as if saying, O oh, Hussein, we are majboor and cannot come to you, but you come to us that we may quench your thirst. And as Islam itself, guidance itself was perishing, Something amazing happened. Something most unexpected. A woman in white, whose white abaya was covered in the blood of Ali ibn al-Akbar, was seen running out from the khayam of Hussein. 
She came running out towards the battlefield as if to save Islam. Whether there were 30,000 soldiers or 120,000 soldiers, they fought 72 men, they killed a six-month-old baby, but now they all stood watching. No one could stop Zainab. Those of you who have been to Karbala, those of you who have not, may Allah, inshallah, bless you with the ziyarah, you have seen the distance from Tilla Zainabiyah to the Qabr of Hussein. So she must have gone at least that distance while they stood watching, not able to stop her. Then she placed her hands under the body of Islam itself. And like a standard or a flag that had fallen in a battlefield, but is raised once again, or like a phoenix rising from the ashes, she lifted Islam and the Qur'an once again. Her father had uprooted the gate of Khaybar. Zainab lifted the Kaaba again and set it right. Zainab now lifted Adam, Zainab lifted Ibrahim, Zainab lifted Musa, Zainab lifted Musa, Zainab lifted Zakaria and Yahya, Zainab lifted Yaqub and Ismail and Ishaq and Dawood and Sulaiman and Isa, Zainab lifted Muhammad and Ali and Fatima and Hassan, and with all her might and all her strength, she lifted Islam itself, she lifted guidance itself once again and said, Allahumma taqabbal minna hadha al-qurban. This is not a small matter my dear brothers and sisters. Because now, the forces of Yazid realized that the battle is not over, it has just begun. Once again now, the Adhan would be heard. Zainab had saved Mecca and Mina. Zainab had ensured that once again there would be Salat and Sawm and Zakat and Hajj. That the sacrifice of Hussein would not remain in Karbala. If the waters of Furat did not reach the children of Hussein, Zainab made sure that Zamzam would continue to flow. If today people throng in millions towards the Kaaba calling out Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, La Sharika Laka Labbaik, it is because of Zainab. It is because of Zainab and she, her stopping Yazid from silencing these voices. And it is because of her as well that once again now the son of Hussein Ali Zainul Abidin became the warith of the Anbiya. It is because of her that he could now turn to Yazid. Even though he was chained, he could look at him in the eyes and say to him, O oh Yazid, this Muhammad who is mentioned in the Adhan, is he your grandfather or is he my grandfather? It is because of Zainab that Zainul Abidin could now say, Man arafani arafani, he who knows me knows me, he who does not know me, let him, let him know me, in the court of Yazid. Now he was able to say, Anabnu Makkata wa Mina, Anabnu Zamzama wa Safa, Anabnu Taha wa Yaseen, I am the son of Makkah and Mina, I am the son of Zamzam and Safa, I am the son of Taha and Yaseen. Because she saved Islam. And how many times Zainab saved Imamat itself? She saved him from a burning tent. She saved him when he saw his father's body when they were parting Karbala and his soul was about to leave from his body. She threw herself just to distract him. She saved him from being killed by Ibn Ziyad. One of the miracles that prove the right of the Ahlul Bayt salam, is how narrowly guidance and hidayah escaped extinction and how whenever Allah rescued Islam, he always did it through the children of Abu Talib. So Ashura is most significant. Let it not be small in your eyes, my dear brothers and sisters. And Rasulullah has said, إِنَّ لِقَتْلِ وَلَدِ الْحُسَيْنِ حَرَارَةٌ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ لَا تُبْرِدُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ In the killing of my son Hussein, there is a fire that is lit in the hearts of the Muslims. Nothing will cool that fire until the day of judgment.